Hey guys, my name is Garrett Strom. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I'm going to teach you a little bit about duct migration patterns. So, the first question is why do ducts migrate? Well, they migrate for a, like, a certain amount of reasons. There's changes in climate and temperature. Ducks prefer cooler climates, but not so cold that it's below freezing often because frozen water is not very permissible to them uh, flourishing as a population because a lot of their food is found within water and flooded timber and everything else. Uh, they have an internal clock uh, that tells them when they should start flying, really. It's linked to the next uh, bullet here, which is changing photo period. So days get longer as the, the seasons transition from spring to winter. So during that time frame, days getting longer, they're getting signaled, okay, all right, now I need to start gaining more fat because it's about to get cold. I'm going to start uh, breeding, we're going to start molting, everything else. And then they start flying off to where they're not ever their destination is, depending on the species of duck, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but the term for this is actually, I don't really know how to pronounce it, I think it's like Zugunru, which is the word for preparing for migrating south. Um, so how they're tracked, it's, it's a pretty good question of how the heck is somebody supposed to keep track of millions of birds and where they go and where they end up. Well, they have a really cool program where a band is placed on these ducks. It's a little metal band with an ID number on it. And when hunters, you know, maybe a hunter kills a duck, a banded duck, they can call uh, that number right there or online and they call in their number to the bird banding laboratory. Uh, which basically gives all the information about the duck, the duck's age, where it was killed, what kind of environment it was found in, if it, has, uh, if it was a fertile female or something, or a free fertile male or infertile. It's a ton of information. Um, more than 200,000 ducks are actually been in North America each year. And you, as you can see here, this little guy's rocking his jewelry. Um, so wood ducks, it, I'm going to focus on two bird species within this presentation, wood ducks and mallard ducks. I do a lot of with them a lot back home because they're very prevalent where I hunt and live. Uh, they live year-round in the southeast and Pacific coast and actually wood ducks are relatively stationary birds compared to other migratory species. About anywhere between 30 and 75 percent of the population is actually a stationary population. But uh, the highest populations are actually found on the southern coast of New Jersey and the Gulf Coast. Uh, they migrate north actually during the summer months to find those cooler climates because like I said, you remember, it's not just a migration south, they migrate back to the northern climates when it gets really hot because they prefer, you know, a cooler mid-range temperature. Um, so there's these things called flyways within our continent. There's four major flyways that migratory birds fly on. There's the Atlantic, Pacific, Mississippi, and Central. Eastern ducks fly on the Atlantic Flyway. It's found on the eastern coast of the United States. And Western ducks use the Pacific Flyway because we're on the western part of the state. So mallard ducks are the other species I was uh, going to present on. And as you can see, we actually have a picture of the duck couple here from Virginia Tech. That's what kind of species they are. Um, the greatest concentrations move from way up in Canada, like uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan throughout the Midwestern United States, all the way down Mississippi. Um, they take the Mississippi Flyway. It's between the Central and Eastern Flyway. I have a map that I'll show you all in a minute, to make more sense. Um, they're actually a more cold weathered bird. They, their migration takes a lot longer than some species. It starts late summer and ends early winter, which is a lot longer than, say, a, a blue wing or green wing teal, which is a very early, quick migration. Uh, so that's why you'll see these guys a lot later and a lot earlier than most birds. So here's the map of the flyways, like I was saying. So this tannish color right here is the Pacific Flyway. The wood ducks take down the west coast to get reach warmer climates. The Atlantic is the blue one, which is the which the eastern wood ducks use. Um, and then this Mississippi here kind of floats down Mississippi from northern Canada and stuff. So. We're going to take a little quiz quick, just to see if anybody's paying attention as to which ducks use which flyway. All right, I got some cool species here, by the way, before I start. That's a green-winged teal, that's a blue-winged teal, that's a harlequin duck, and that's a cinnamon teal. All 
Alright, so which duck would use flyway number four? The fourth one on the bottom? Yeah, it's labeled four right there. No, I meant the fourth duck group. It was like two ducks. Oh, those ducks weren't involved. Uh, the two ducks I talked about, I should have specified. The, um, was it wood duck or mallard? Wood. That's a wood duck, yeah. Have an animation? No, it didn't want to go. Okay. Alright, so now who would use the red area, number three? Wood duck or uh, mallard? Mallards would use that, yes. And the cool thing about the flyways is they're not necessarily set in stone. Like, if a, you know, if a mallard is trying to get to Virginia, they'll take central down and then hop over into the eastern, but for the most part, the largest populations use central or use the Mississippi flyway. Uh, who would use number one? Yep. All right, cool. So, just to conclude everything really quick. It's really important to understand the migration patterns of these ducks and understand where they go and where they end up. It gives you a really good idea of the climates they prefer, the habitats they inhabit, where they're going to return to within the warmer uh, seasons versus the colder seasons. Uh, and it understands from an understanding of the mating cycles to understand when and where they meet, to help properly maintain those habitats to support birth of future populations. Um, so it's also really important going back to the bands, like if you kill a banded duck, a lot of hunters like to uh, put them on their lanyard that they have their duck calls on. It's kind of like a trophy, a status, assist, or a status symbol uh, within the hunting community. But it's really important to make sure you report those bands because it really does help uh, conservation efforts with understanding the population dynamics and supporting, promoting their future flourishment, if you'd say. So, these are my references. Does anybody have any questions regarding ducks or, oh, I don't know, I my reference by accident. Does anybody have any questions about uh, ducks or the ducks I talked about, migration? Are they still under the same laws, like, as far as hunting goes? Like, you still have to have like, a license? Mm -hmm. So, they're protected under the, uh, or they're regulated under the Migratory Bird Act of 1918. Mm -hmm. It essentially makes it so you need to acquire not only a state uh, hunting license, you need a federal duck stamp, which is like a tax on shooting the ducks, mm -hmm. and you get uh, bag limits per day. Uh, like, you can only kill three wood ducks a day, you can kill four mallards, but only two, two have to be male, two have to be female. And um, another thing is like, you can only have six total ducks. So say you kill three wood ducks, that means even though you technically can kill four mallards, you can only kill three that day, because you have a six bag limit. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're uh, heavily regulated through state legislation and federal legislation. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it.